Hey, this is Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about blend modes. And while they're certainly relevant to Blender, they're more of a general design topic. And I'm going to talk about a lot of other software. So blend modes, in case you're wondering, are these things. Things like screen, multiply, that blend different layers together or different elements of an image together to, to form a, one image. And I'm going to use Photoshop as my go-to example. And if you go to that little bit where it says normal and pull down the menu, you get the blend modes. And I like what Photoshop does because they kind of categorize them in a way that makes sense. And now I'm going to go through each of these and talk about them. But I'm also not, I'm not going to cover every single blend mode. I'm only going to cover ones that I feel are really relevant. Um, and I'm going to cover them in a very practical way. These are the ones I feel like are really necessary, um, at least for what I do. And I'm going to show you kind of how to use them more than like the technical details behind them, although I will explain some of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one you get is Dissolve, and it kind of creates this noisy look. It's a bit more obvious if you turn down the opacity. Honestly, I never use it. The next batch are the darkening ones, and the two important ones here are Darken and Multiply. And of them, Multiply is clearly the most important. So I'll go over that first. Let me go into Photoshop. Now the first thing that comes to mind with Multiply is Shadows. And here I have a picture that I've shot of a backpack. It's a photograph. And I've cut out the backpack, but as, the, as for the shadow, I've kept basically the bottom part and um, just kept that kind of weirdly shaped shadow there. And then I have it on white. And it looks fine on white, but the problem is when you try to change the color, you have a problem because the shadow is on white. But not if you put it, if you set the blend mode to multiply, and then it looks great. And now you can go ahead and put it on any background that you want. And this works for colored shadows as well. This is actually a food render I have. It's a render out of Blender. And using cycles, you actually do get some reflections from these, uh, these bits into the shadow. And so that, you know, if you set that shadow again to multiply, you can put that on any, you know, on any color you want. And it will still kind of keep that, that like kind of orangey pinkish color. Now to show you how I use Darken, we're going to head into Adobe InDesign. Now I have all these images placed in here, but each of these images has a white background that has not been cut out. So you can kind of see that they are all overlapping and interfering. But we don't even need to cut out the background as long as we use the Darken Blend Mode. And to find the Blend Modes in InDesign, you got to go to your Effects panel, which I brought up right here, and then you select Darken. So there you go. Um, so now, basically, what Darken does is it takes the topmost thing, and if the value is darker than what's below it, it will show it. Otherwise, it won't. So you can see, so you can see as I overlap, it, this is what it kind of looks like. And you can do the same thing here with Multiply. Multiply basically works the same way, but it just changes it, changes how that looks slightly. In fact, it'll probably be better if I go under there, and that, that that's darkened with this egg. And then if I set the egg to Multiply, you can kind of see the difference. Another useful thing I found for Darken is say I want to get rid of these highlights on my bald head. Let's take a shot. Let's bring it into Photoshop, where I'll now create a new layer, and I will set this layer to Darken. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to go in here, and I'm going to go ahead and use my brush tool, and I'm going to go ahead and sample this, sample kind of right next to the highlight there, kind of lighter right here, and just paint right over it. And see, now what it does is it only darkens the highlight, and it doesn't affect the kind of lighter areas, so you can kind of... You know, the brighter you want, you can kind of go in there and do that. And I can do it right here as well, uh, maybe a little bit more like that. So so that I find that really useful. I found out, you know, or I can maybe get rid of this one on my nose as well. This is just sort of exaggerating. But yeah, there you go. And you can use that, you know, and it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect the darker areas. It only affects, it only darkens things. So that's really useful for retouching. Now moving on to the blend modes that lighten the image. And the important ones here are screen and add, which is called here linear dodge. And I should briefly mention lighten as well, because it's the opposite of darken. So it basically takes an image, the image on top, if it's lighter than the bottom, it will show through. And if it's not, it won't show anything. Now, screen is one I use a lot. And to show you how that works, I'm going to go ahead and cast a spell. And how I did that was I went to After Effects, and I motion tracked my hand there. And I bought in this video that I got from, looks like, Tapovola from YouTube. He has it under a Creative Commons license. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. And I'm going to put it around where my finger is, but of course we have to set the blend mode, which you set right here in After Effects, to screen. And that's going to put that little spark there. And then I'm going to parent it to the track here. So we should be, we should see what that sounds like, what that looks like. 
Yeah, so there we go. Now, as you can see, screen is great for things that are bright, particularly if they're shot on a dark background. And that obviously includes sparks and flares, but it can also include things like smoke, and it can even include like glass shards or crystals, anything that you want brighter. And now while screen works like that, add or linear dodge is kind of screen's big brother, screen on steroids. So here, I'll show you an example. This is a lens flare set to screen. And now this is a lens flare set to add. Now to show you how I did that, I'm gonna go into Adobe Premiere where I'm editing this tutorial. And here I have a bunch of lens flares. It's just me recording, shining a flashlight into my camera. And so this is the flare I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna take the footage there and I'm gonna put it right here, which is, I set up a marker. And this is my screen one, so I'm gonna go in, onto the footage and then I'm gonna to go to Effect Controls and I'm gonna to go to Opacity and set it to screen. So I'm gonna mute it for a sec so you guys don't hear that. And then you can you see how it plays. Gonna then go duplicate that to the next marker. And then instead of setting it to screen, I'm gonna set it to add. And there you go. And now we move on to the ones that make the image both darker and lighter, depending on what the top layer is doing. And by far the most important one here is overlay. And that's kind of a combination of screen and multiply. So basically, it, if you have an image on top, the brighter parts are going to go as if they were screened in, and the darker parts are going to go as if they were multiplied in. So I'm going to show you an example here in Adobe Illustrator. So I have this texture that I downloaded. It's crumpled paper, and I'm going to put it on here and make it look crumpled. And so I'm going to use overlay to do that because what overlay does is it takes the highlights here, anything above neutral gray, and make this lighter. And it's going to take the shadows and make it darker. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go drag this on top and then set it to overlay. And you set that in the transparency panel here in Illustrator. And as you can see, now the dark are getting darker and the brights are getting brighter even in here and it's sort of happening in general and as you can tell overlay is great for textures here I'll show you another way I use overlay this is blender obviously and this is actually the can for my mock-up 3d demo this is my app that I'm this is for 3d for designers and of course I will take the opportunity to plug it and there's an overlay in there and this is actually the image that is being overlaid as you can see it's gray everywhere except the top where what I've actually done is what they call baking. I've baked it using cycles, so you get some of these shadows and highlights in the can. Let me see if I can show you. I'm gonna hit a fast preview here and uh, bring it into my test area and uh, just hit reload. And you'll be able to see that you actually get this great detail here in the highlights and shadows. And these are the kind of things that are really hard to do in real time. Uh, so it's nice to be able to bake them in using like cycles to render them and then it can overlay, so it, it overlays using, as I said, everything that's neutral gray doesn't do anything, everything that's uh, light, everything that's a highlight screens in, and everything that's a shadow multiplies in. So you can, so you basically see, you know, I can, for example, if I take uh, the year design here and I put it on top, you can see, or even put it on the uh, tab here, you can see that the highlights and shadows stay even though I'm changing the color. So that's a, gr that's a great way that uh, overlay is useful. Let me see if I can show you how, this is how it comes in in Blender and it goes through one of these uh, overlay nodes. And uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like without that. And you can see it, it, even though it has a normal map and everything, it doesn't really have that like nice baked textures in there. So, so what you do to do that is you actually, you can create an overlay, uh, you know, you do use a, a mix node, so a color um, mix RGB. And then you basically, I'm not going to do that because I've already done it, but you, you set these two things in there and you set the factor to one and then you set it to overlay. Uh, you can set it here. And the, the same blend modes basically as in Photoshop. They have a couple new ones. But so now I go back, hit reload again. And there you see it. Now, other than overlay and the darker and lighter section, I haven't really used these other blend modes very much. I've, I know some people have done some cool things with them, and if you have some cool ideas, share them in comments. Um, I honestly basically use overlay, and I've used the other ones for one minor thing, which I'll, which I'll show you right now. So basically what you can do is duplicate a layer, so I'm going to do that right now, then I'm going to neutralize it, just drop down the saturation, then I'm going to set it to soft light. And that creates what they call a bleach bypass look, which is based kind of on a film processing. 
And if I use hard light, it gets even harder. And as you can see, it's very contrasty, but not uh, very saturated. But if I turn up the saturation, the colors really start to go blue. Then these set of nodes. I called them math because they're really more for analysis than image manipulation. Though, of course, you can use them however you want. The only one I use is difference. And let me show you how that works. So I'm back in Photoshop, and I actually have the image I had at the very beginning of this video, the screenshot of the Layers Palette, which is just this thing right over here. And what I want to do is actually align this menu to this image. And so I'm going to actually capture that menu right here. You can do that on a Mac by hitting Command Shift 4 and then hit space bar. Uh, so I got that file right here, and then I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to use difference to align them, because difference is the difference between the images. So if there's no difference at all, it'll just be black. And if there is some difference, there'll be some image. So it's great. So I can move that onto here. And then I'm going to set this blend mode to difference. And then you can see there's a little bit, it's mostly mostly pretty dark gray, so there's not much difference, but there is some right around the text. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to get it right in the right position. And I know it's right when there's no difference at all. And it's not completely black because this isn't 100% opaque. So that's how I use difference to, to basically to align things. Now these ones, which I'm calling the color and tonality section, I think actually I think are a bit underrated. I don't typically use hue and saturation, but I use color sometimes, and I use luminosity quite often. Not only does it have a cool name, but it's quite useful. And what it does is it acts only on the luminance or the tones of an image. And that basically means you're, the luminance is essentially a black and white version of the image. And so by acting only on the luminosity, which means you know any adjustments you make are only to the tones. Uh, color is kind of the opposite. Color only acts on the color, so it doesn't change the tones at all. It changes the color. And if you've already worked in lab space, um, LAB, which is that weird third thing that Photoshop does, other than RGB and CMYK, um, luminosity is essentially acting on the L channel and color is acting on the A and B. Let me show you an example. To do that, I'm going to take a picture. So bringing that into Photoshop, I'm going to apply a curve to increase the contrast. Raise the highlights, lower the shadows, and then just do a nice S curve. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit just for effect. Now you notice I increased the contrast, but I also way increased the saturation. Like this is really red and yellow, and it was kind of a warm shot to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to luminosity, which is right almost off the screen. And so now you can see I'm increasing the saturation. I, excuse me, I'm increasing the contrast without increasing the saturation. Now if I want to do the opposite, I could set it to color and increase the saturation without increasing the contrast. Or you, you can go the opposite way too, like say I want to lower the contrast for some reason. And I can lower the contrast, the reverse S curve. But now I make it a, kind of a flat image. But if I set that to luminosity, I keep the same saturation. So I find this really useful, particularly for portraits, food, anytime you have these kind of you know yellow red tones that you don't want to get too saturated. And so that's about it. Well, thanks for watching. It was great to try something different to do more of a general design topic and not something so specific to Blender, probably helping people out who may not want to or feel ready yet to use Blender. Um, tell me what you think about more doing more general design topics rather than Blender. I'd, I'd be happy to do more of these, but I have some other Blender ideas as well. Um, again, and leave a comment. And also leave a comment if I didn't cover something. Like there's plenty of blend modes I didn't cover, and there's plenty of other use cases and cool techniques I'm sure you guys all know. Tell me about them in comments. Always love to learn new things. Love to hear about that. Um, and, you know, subscribe if you're interested. And, of course, I'm also going to go ahead and plug my uh, design tool, this uh, 3D for design designers tool. It's a, it's a online application that lets you get your images onto 3D models online and share them. Uh, I've talked about it a lot in other videos, so go to mockup3d.com and sign up for my, my mailing list if you're interested and if you want to check out the live demo. And yeah, so thanks again. Have a good one. Bye-bye.